let's get introduced to enterprise java beans in this introduction we will see what is enterprise java beans why was the need for the same what all advantages it provides before the advent of ejb a typical java web application consists of java server pages and servlets as well as java beans the java server pages were mainly used for presentation while the servlet took care of the controller part that is to decide which next page to show to the user based upon the current request and getting data from any persistent systems like database was taken care by java beans which were also known as model so a typical application consisted of all these three things interacting with each other now the question comes why ejb came into picture when we have jsp servlets and model interacting together to form a web application now as the web world started developing and web applications established itself as one of the best solutions more and more complex applications began to be developed these complex applications required a huge amount of business processing in which it used to take a huge amount of data from database and process it via various functions now as such applications started developing using the simple jsp servlet architecture was not enough to obtain scalable high performance and distributed system scalability implies as the number of users increase the performance should not degrade as well as a distributed system was highly desirable because in the case of distributed system the same code can exist at multiple different locations thus providing us with load balancing so in order to get these advantages it was not enough to make use of jsps or servlets for complex business processing hence ejb came into picture after seeing the reason why enterprise java bean came into picture let's see what is enterprise java bean a enterprise java bean is a server side component that is it will always reside on the server side it is reusable component because it does business processing and business processing can be shared across various applications so it's reusable it's modular in nature and it performs some specific units of functionality which in general terms are called as business processing or business functionalities these functionalities are quite complex to be handled directly by servlet hence we have enterprise java beans doing it now let's see the differences between ejb and a normal java class ejb even though the coding takes place with respect to java it requires a special ejb container the ejb containers which generally are used are also known as application servers and these application servers are required for ejbs to run that is ejb runs in particular hosted environment second difference between ejb and java classes in order to make use of ejbs we are required to code some interfaces to be used by clients some of these interfaces which are very commonly known are known as home interface and remote interface these interfaces are required in order to invoke ejb the ejb life cycle is maintained typically by application server the life cycle of ejbs are different based upon different types of ejbs which we will cover in later sessions shown is a complete java web application making use of the ejb component a typical java web application consisting of jsp servlets and model will now invoke ejbs which can be present across various application servers as we can see we have more than one application server 
each having its own instance of EJB. A collection of application servers put together to help in load balancing are also known as clusters or forms. And since EJBs are by default distributed component, we get a distributed architecture based upon web application providing us with high performance and scalability. Tomorrow in case the number of users increases in my system, I can easily leverage the same by adding a new application server and replicating the EJB instance in them. Next let's see what are the benefits of using EJB.